next one you have is the Beck Depression Inventory. This one is also a tool that has been around for years, created by Aaron Beck, who's the founder of Cognitive Therapy. And uh, the goal of this depression inventory is a lot, largely a lot of the questions are focused on cognition, which makes sense because this is cognitive therapy. So cognitive therapists are especially interested in cognition. Now you're going to find in behavioral activation, cognition is not as important as behavior, but we still want to be able to capture and have an understanding of a client's core cognitions around depression and depressed mood. So we ask questions around guilt, punishment, disappointment in oneself, satisfaction. We ask in number nine about suicide. I I don't have thoughts of killing myself or I would kill myself if I had the chance. So you have this um, graduated kind of uh, point system here. Next page addresses decisions, loss of interest, irritability. So again, all of our core depression symptomology. And the thing that I like about the BDI is it's not just capturing deficits, it's also capturing strengths. So if you have clients that are experiencing depression, but let's say, for example, that they are still able to make good decisions, they're still engaged with other people, they're going to work, they're going to family functions, uh, they're still able to uh, use executive functioning. So they may have, in number 13, they may have a zero or a one, But maybe in number six, they have a three. Maybe they're really struggling with uh, appetite or they're struggling with um, uh, insomnia in particular. So I think that's one of the benefits of this assessment tool is that it allows us to identify both the challenges and then also the strengths that the client is is experiencing around depression. And then um, there's 21 questions here. And then as you can see here, we also have this scoring system, looking at the total number of points, pretty easy to interpret. Is that going to be uh, borderline clinical depression? Are we looking at more moderate, severe, extreme depression? Okay. So this is not the best copy. I would suggest that you actually just Google the behavioral activation for depression scale. But whenever I printed this, it always prints those gray areas kind of dark. Um, can't remember if they have a color version or not. They may be a little bit easier to use. Um, But this is the behavioral activation for depression scale. So let's take a look at this one here. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Okay. So number one is I stayed in bed for too long, even, even though things, even though I had things to do. So even I'm having a hard time reading it. Um, Number two, there were certain things I needed to do that I didn't do. Number three, I am concerned with the something as amount and types of things I did. Number four, I engaged in a wide and diverse array of activities. So the the point of this assessment is now we're really honing in on behavior of depression, presence of positive, healthy, functional behavior or the absence. And and you can see here, these questions are really focused on looking specifically at the behavioral patterns of your client. And this is gonna be very important as you begin to look at behavioral activation, because the information you pull from this particular assessment is going to help you develop treatment goals and help you know what specific areas in behavioral activation that you need to focus on with the client. And so like every other question is shaded. And so that makes it a little bit hard to read, like if it's been scanned or copied like this. But if you go to, and if you just type in behavioral activation for depression scale, you can read these questions. Let me scroll down and I'll read a few more of the questions on the screening here. Number seven, I was an active person and accomplished the goals I set out to do. Number nine, I did things to avoid feeling sadness or other painful emotions, et cetera. So you get the point here of the questions and then it continues on the second page. You add up the subscale at the bottom and then here is the scoring instructions. And it's broken up into these different areas, activation, avoidance, rumination, work, school impairment, social impairment. So we have those four key areas. Gives you instructions on doing the score, et cetera. 
Okay, the next thing I wanted to share with you is a tool that I've used for years. It's the Depression Self-Care Action Plan. This is a great tool that allows you to be able to jumpstart your treatment planning and goal setting with clients. Obviously, once you've done some assessments, I really love the fact that it says at the top, depression is treatable because we always want to give people hope and we always want to give them the reality of, yes, there are people uh, just as we saw in the video. And that's why I like to show these kinds of videos to clients. And it sh it validates the lived experience of depression, but it also shows the hope of the, of depression being treatable. Um, but this just is a tool that you can use to help identify with your clients what specific areas that we know, we know in research are most effective in being able to mitigate depression. And you can see here that it's a tool that allows you to get kind of specific with clients and identify how many minutes, what are the steps in this goal? And it allows you to use this as a tool, give them a copy, you keep a copy and you can monitor this. How likely are you to follow through with these activities prior to your next visit? It's kind of a motivational interviewing question, but very important so that you get an idea of the client's level. Where are they in the stages of change, motivation, et cetera? Very important for us to have an idea.